Over a week ago here at the channel, we tested the X5660, which is a $20 Xeon back from 2010. It's very good value for money, has six cores, 12 threads, and you can overclock it on a decent X58 motherboard. And we tested that against the 9900K, and I'll put the video up here if you haven't seen it already, where we coupled it with an RTX 2080 Ti, and there was quite a difference, but the RTX 2080 Ti is a very expensive graphics card. It's out of reach for a lot of people. And the $20 Xeon, when it comes down to it, really shouldn't be coupled with a graphics card that costs over $1,200. So today we're gonna to be sort of making things more realistic and pairing this Xeon with an RTX 2070 and then comparing it against the 9900K, but also comparing it against the Ryzen 5 2600, which is pretty much the best value for money CPU you can get in the new price performance sector. And on top of that, we're gonna be doing two tests on the Ryzen chip. Practically no overclocks out of the box, and then tweaking the CPU to four gigahertz and also throwing in some 3600 megahertz memory. So what are we waiting for? Let the games begin. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and here we have seven different games tested on these CPUs, both across 1080p and 1440p ultra settings. Now we have tuned the Xeon, the X5660 to 4.5 gigahertz. We've even given it some mediocre memory, which I believe represents a great sweet spot for someone buying this used combination. As for the Ryzen 5 2600, we're using that with two different sets of memory, some budget stuff from Kingston, and then some G-Skill more expensive stuff with 3600 megahertz X and P profiles. We're testing this on an X370 motherboard, and then for the Intel, that's clocked at five gigahertz, but that's got much more expensive gear. And as for the graphics card, we're using the RTX 2070 from Aorus, which comes overclocked out of the factory. It's one of the best 2070s you can get out there, but does command a slight premium. But that being said, let's pull up the first results here. Far Cry 5, which is very single threaded dependent. It loves that single core, high clocks and good IPC. And what we can see here at 1080p is the 9900K coming out on top, but also the Ryzen 5 2600 does benefit a lot from those memory overclocks and also that four gigahertz speeds. When you don't have these tweaks applied, it's actually coming very close to the Xeon. Uh, so the out of the box speeds for the Ryzen 5 2600 goes to around about 3.7 to 3.75 gigahertz. So we can see that even tweaking your gear out of the box does make a big difference. Moving over to 4040p shows a bigger gap than 1080p with the Ryzen 5 versus the Xeon. And of course the 9900K coming out on top, but there really isn't a whole lot of difference here at 1440p. It's not really nothing to write home about. The graphics card is pretty much getting maxed on all these configurations here. Move over to Dota 2, very competitive multiplayer title. Here at 1080p Ultra settings, we had the uh, Xeon actually beating out the Ryzen 5 2600 uh, with its sort of out of the box configuration. But then when we moved over with tweaking on the Ryzen 5 2600, pretty much even the playing field out. 9900K of course coming out well ahead of all these other three setups here that we had going on. And then moving over to 1440p showed pretty much the exact same story. And so the graphics card wasn't really being stressed at both 1080p or 1440p ultra settings in this title. Moving over to CSGO, this is a game that again loves high FPS. And so we are testing those ultra settings to not just stress the GPU, but also stress the CPU. Uh, especially when it comes to things like shadows. And what we had at 1080p here was 315 FPS versus 297 FPS average at 1080p. And then of course, when we applied those tweaks to the Ryzen CPU, it was coming out ahead of the Xeons. Uh, of course, the 9900K beating everything as it should, since it does command a much bigger premium than these other two configurations here. 1440p was a similar story. However, the gap was closing uh, big time with the RTX 2070. And onto another competitive multiplayer title here, Overwatch. We saw at 1080p ultra settings uh, that the Xeon was just slightly beating the Ryzen 5 2600 out of the box. But again, once we applied those tweaks, Ryzen 5 2600 uh, started boosting well ahead. The 9900K as expected coming ahead of everything at this resolution. Stepping things up to 1440p, saw a similar scenario as 1080p in this particular title uh, with the Ryzen 5 2600. Interestingly enough, even with the stock settings just pulling a little bit ahead, then the tweak configurations coming actually close to that of the 9900K. 
And next up we have Black Ops 4. Here is a title that needs both a good GPU and a good CPU. In the previous test we saw a massive difference between the 9900K and the 6 core Xeon here. Uh, but with the RTX 2070 things are starting to level out a bit more. Those differences aren't so pronounced. And so at 1080p you can see that the Ryzen 5 2600 came a bit ahead of the Xeon in this title. And then when it was tweaked it came out with a bigger gap closing in on that of the 9900K, which means that this title is pretty well optimized across all those cores and threads. And stepping things up to 1440p saw that gap close ever so more between Ryzen and the 9900K. The Xeon in this title was falling quite a bit behind even at 1440p. And now next up we've got Battlefield 5, a special request as is the next title from Mr. Hardware Unboxed. Uh, we saw here at 1080p that the Ryzen 5 2600, even when it was untweaked, was scoring very well uh, compared to the Xeon, it was actually scoring very close to the 9900K. And then when we tweaked it, we literally saw no difference uh, in average FPS versus the untweaked Ryzen 5 2600, which was very interesting. I haven't seen a result like this before, uh, needless to say. So this was a very good result for all of these configurations at 1440p, which is kind of like a good spot where I guess a lot of people would want to be if they're using an RTX 2070. And now moving on to Hitman 2, the results were kind of similar to Battlefield 5, except the Ryzen 5 2600 did benefit a lot from being tweaked. And then the 9900K was out ahead of everything. Uh, the Xeon still did pretty well. When we look at those total FPS figures, they're still very solid. I mean, I don't know how much FPS you need in this title in particular, but this is well over 120. So it will be great for 120 Hertz gamers. Uh, stepping things up to 1440p, uh, we saw very good FPS numbers from all three configurations as well, uh, with the gap closing to pretty much that of nothing. This was surprisingly actually a pretty well optimized title on PC. I started playing, I'm like, it's actually pretty smooth, at least on all these three configurations here. And now here we are with conclusion time and the $20 Xeon, it did really well. When you couple it with an RTX 2070, I think this is still, even in 2018, a great sweet spot for this CPU. Of course, if you're gonna go for a cheap Xeon like this and you've got that motherboard, for instance, the X58 motherboard that I had here, someone gave it to me because it had no heat sinks on the North Bridge and the South Bridge, and that caused it to overheat. But once we fixed that up, we got some cheap memory in there, we had a combo that is very good value for money. And that's the whole purpose of X58. It represents really good value for money. And so if you get a used graphics card, like a GTX 1080 Ti, or if you get a used 1070, for example, you're not gonna be seeing a whole lot of difference between this old CPU, providing you overclock it and tweak it, compared to that of the latest and greatest Ryzen 5 2600, or even the 9900K. However, once we do start getting into things like RTX 2080 Ti's, then the differences do become more apparent. Uh, of course, the Ryzen 5 2600 is a phenomenal value for money chip, especially if you're buying new parts and you want those warranties. As we saw with the performance figures, especially at 1440p, it was coming very close to the 9900K a lot of the time. And when we tweaked it, we got even more performance out of it. But I think it was important to note that tweaking is very important for Ryzen 5. If you don't tweak it, in some of the cases, it was losing to the Xeon, so the old school Xeon is no joke. When I seem to go around to different videos and different comment sections, people seem to either love it or they seem to hate it. And the people that hate it seem to think that it's really outdated, it's just done. Uh, and maybe I should make a different video addressing those concerns. Because uh, what we saw here today was a very good outlook for the little Xeon, especially coming in with its price point. Of course, as you've heard in the past, those X58 motherboards are getting rarer and rarer to come by but a lot of the times when you pick them up in deals, people uh, can throw them out essentially with their i7-920, and that's where you're going to extract the value out of these little Xeons. But what it all comes down to, all three setups here that I displayed here today all have their purpose. 9900K is for the person who just wants the absolute best, doesn't care about price. The Ryzen 5 2600 is for that person who wants to maybe get a uh, sort of mid to higher range graphics card like a 2070, and get all new parts and get some good value for money. And then the Xeon is for that person who just absolutely loves tweaking. They don't mind buying used parts and they want the absolute best price performance. And I hope that sums everything up for you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below, which of these three setups do you like the best? 
and why. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.